I consider Arnold not Arnold. I consider him bodybuilding. Arnold is bodybuilding to me, to everyone else. Arnold is what opened the door for us. Before Arnold and Franco, who, who, Arnold and Franco were the first real pros of bodybuilding. Before them, uh, there was no such thing as professional bodybuilding. Now there's maybe uh, 20 or 25 professionals able to do what uh, all of us here are doing today throughout the year. Uh, but without Arnold's initial influence uh, and initial uh, ons uh, onset to the scene, uh, it would never be where it is today. But if we accept the idea that the sport has progressed in the last five well, years... Well, it certainly has. Well, how would you rate Arnold's chances if he was in shape the same as he was before and, say, competing tomorrow? It win. I think that Arnold would have his hands full if he were to compete uh, now, unless he really became really serious about his training and did all that was necessary for him to do to get in tip-top shape. But if Arnold were able to come back and win these contests after a short interval, it means that the sport of body mail has literally stood still for the last five years. This, in my opinion, is not true. Okay, the first contestant is Danny Padilla. Boya Coe is the second contestant. Roy Deval is the third. The fourth contestant, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Roger Walker is number five. Roger Walker from Australia. Roy Callender, number six. Roy Callender. I originally Callender. had intended around uh, eight weeks ago to start training very hard with the objective in mind to get in my best possible shape for a film I'm going to do, which is Conan the Barbarian. And we're going to start shooting the, uh, the first few scenes in October. And so I really wanted to be muscular because the idea was that Conan was a very muscular, heroic looking guy and that I should be in top shape. So all along with sword fighting lessons and dancing lessons and all that, I did my bodybuilding. But the closer I came to this competition, the more people started speculating on the idea that I would be competing. And uh, uh, the more I started thinking about the possibility. And so around three weeks or two weeks ago, I decided, well, I think it would be kind of an interesting challenge, really, to uh, do something in, in eight weeks that most of the guys do uh, of in uh, preparing a year or two years in advance. It really depends on what body part I train, you know, what I think about. But it is, it always has to be something that has involved in some form or the other with self-hypnosis, you know, and really psych myself up for it. Because otherwise it's impossible to squat with four or five hundred pounds. I mean, it's really hard to do that, and it can be boring. And so what you do is you create a certain excitement, and that's what you think about. You think about your next set, you think about the particular muscle that you're training, you try to isolate the muscle, you try to pump it up, you let blood go into this area and stuff like that. And uh, you, your feedback then always is that the, the muscle is responding and that means growth. Can you pull out the hand here? Pull the hand Okay, thank you. camera around, you always do like this. It makes the trauma yeah, build yeah, up yeah, a little bit. The shoulder's over 100 That's pounds. That's right. It's just a 10 pound plate, but you must make it sound like it was 1,000 pounds. So everybody thinks you're uh... macho.
Striving after an ideal in a sense that you're molding your physique, right? Uh, you're developing your body, uh, changing the, the contours and shapes of the muscles so it looks uh, a certain way you want it to look, a certain mental perception you perceive, trying to uh, gain that or, or trying to make yourself into that perception. There's a lot of mental training involved in, in body movement. I think also you're cultivating a feeling inside. Uh, you're try you have a a need, a calling, much like a priest, have this inert need to do something that you must do, and you'll not be happy unless it's fulfilled. And that's where I'm at. That's why I'm here today. In fact, I, cert I t believe very much that bodybuilding is more mental than physical. Uh, you're concerned with, with this, first of all, this mental projection, of what you want to look like, what you want to be like, as far as the contour and shape of your body. Be concerned with daily feelings of, of exercises and, and, and handles and, and muscles. You're concerned with putting your mind in the muscle. Remember also that every man in this competition is already a world champion. To be able to compete in the Mr. Olympia, the first requisite is that you must have won a Mr. Universe title or a world championship. Facing me, please. Face me, please. Chris, this way, please. Tricep pose. Tricep pose, please. Turn forward. Uh, I was uh, worried from the time I stepped on a stage for the first round. It's amazing how how insecure you get after not being on stage for five years. I mean, I used to go out and it was my home on stage. This time I went out and I, was, I, I felt very uncomfortable, you know, being a showpiece out there, you know, being always having people look at you in a bathing suit. I am the kind of a character that doesn't like to expose himself, okay? And uh, whatever you see on stage, that, that's you, you know? And whenever you watch somebody in a gymnasium, the way he trains, that's an extension of him. And uh, I felt this time I had to expose myself. I had to stand out there for an hour or two and, and, and just be compared to all those different guys. And that is what I didn't like at all. <laughs> The important thing is that you always challenge yourself, you know, and I'm a strong believer in the philosophy of staying hungry, you know, and really always being hungry for more and being hungry for uh, bigger and better things, you know, and whenever I have, I have achieved the goal, then immediately after that, I ask myself what other challenge can I put up to, to, to try to achieve, you know, and that's what staying hungry basically means.
I'm a strong believer also in the Western philosophy of conquering, of achieving, of climbing, of uh, getting higher and higher to the top and all those things. Because that's, in my opinion, what life is all about, is living rich rather than just existing and just wasting away your, your life since we only have one, you know. <laughs> I consider bodybuilding philosophical, very much so. I question my existence. Why do I exist? Where am I going? Uh, I always had this craving for more. I compare this to uh, John Jonathan Livingston Siegel. This, this Siegel uh, wanted to do something different than a normal everyday thing, which he was supposed to do, and they urged him to do. He wanted to expand and to wonder and to, to do something unique and artistic. And not only, not only in, in the sense for expanding uh, his artistic ability, but for this, in the sense of his expanding, his expanding his awareness. To me, it's the same type of thing I associate with my bodybuilding. So naturally, the dedication I have for the sport is very intense. I'll give anything. I'll give total commitment to do it. Because I, I, I must do it the best or better than I can possibly do it for my ability. And uh, that's what it's all about tomorrow night on stage. All year long, I've been doing this, and now, Final day is here to show what I've done.
three-time Mr. Olympia, Frank Zane. Number one. I will win. And we'll come on strong, stay long, talk loud, and win the Olympia crowd. Oh, really? That's it. Oh. Say it, believe it, and achieve it. It's what as simple as that. Schwarzenegger goes today. Avita Zane, Avita Schwarzenegger. Samir's coming on strong. All right, right on. <laughs> the Lebanese man. <laughs> Lebanese lover. <laughs> Is mightier than a muscle in this particular case, right? <laughs> Remember the golden rule he who has a gold makes the rule. <laughs> Zane and Arnold in big trouble today. Oh, I know that. That's goddamn yeah. gross. Never been that rich. von eins, zwei, drei oder vierte? Ja. Ja, und dann den anderen mit den anderen Arm vorne. Ja, das ist besser, glaube ich. Und du? Ich würde relaxen, wenn ich dich Wir haben exakt 20 Minuten, okay? Wir gehen aus, ja? can actually create a vision of what your body will look like. And then you mold your body closer and closer to that vision. And actually, you, you will turn this vision into reality. And it's wonderful, really, to see that happening, that you actually can see it in front of you, which I think they call uh, the, the, the third eye, you know, where you visualize what you want to be in reality and then you get closer and closer to that. And there's a, a, a known thing now in sports, the inner sports, they call it.
Good ring chunks. Oh. Maybe I'll wear I don't know. I had a good time. No. I'm the best shape of my life. What can I say? I feel great. You know what I mean? That's good. Yeah. And uh, when you know you put your total being, every bit of inner person, into your training and into this day, you feel good no matter what. I feel good in that sense. Placing her enough. All I know is I'm the best I can be right now. And, uh, that's it. We'll see you later. Okay. Everybody likes to be wanted and needed and appreciated and loved and all those things. Some people only have have it in a limited way, you know, by just being loved by their family or by their children or by their brother or whatever, a wife. 
Um, some people like more than that. Now, I'm one of them. To me, it's always a great pleasure performing in front of a great audience. It really turns me on. And uh, it's a real enjoyable thing, you know, when you see people enjoying what you do. Schwarzenegger. You better believe it, man. It was exactly like it used to be. I mean, I, I got so turned on. It brought back so many great memories. It's amazing when you're out of it for five years. You have to like learn all over again. Every step. And um, which is a wonderful experience, of course, because it puts you right back where you belong. She's definitely not in the sky. But you put ground. it together, Arnold. You put it together. And in two months or two weeks, the last week. Two months all together. Yeah. Oh, I wish that I could do is to have a time machine and just wind it to the front like an hour and a half. Just then we know much more. Yeah, I, I can tell you right now. Right? I know. I know. There's one class of bodybuilder, and then there's your class. What this time? Hungry. Uh, uh, craving some food in general. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. You feel good about today? I want ice cream soda about that big. And a pizza pie. And what do you want? A bottle of wine? I want a bottle of wine and bread and cheese. Bottle of wine, bread and cheese, please, right now. How did it feel up there? It felt great. Uh, it was. Uh, I mean, I uh, have heard throughout the whole day today that it's a very close contest. And, um, you know, I want to make sure when it is that close that uh, the last minute you put everything in this that you have. And so that's what I did. I really had my friends, you know, psych me up and told me that to be brutal and to get into it, just like in the old days. 
And so that's what I try to do, to get really into it and just pose and feel the audience. And if the audience likes one pose, to stay long at that pose. If the audience didn't like another pose, to just get out of it as fast as possible and all those things. So it was like uh, I came closer and closer to the old days in this last routine. So I felt really good right now. And there's one more round to go, which is the pose off uh, with the six best, which, is the, which are the six best guys. And I think that's exactly when I hit my 10. Here are the seven finalists in numerical order. Number two, Boyako, USA. Number four, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Number five, Roger Walker. Number six, Roy Callender, Canada. Number seven, Mike Mensa, USA. Number 11, Frank Zane, USA. Number 12, Chris Dickerson, USA. These are the seven finalists. My good friend here, Frank Verwas, will be giving the judges their final papers. And the judges, please, just put number one against your number one choice. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Two days of eating. It was raining for you. Can I ask for him to press? Most people are too close to the, the, what they're doing that they can't see themselves anymore, you know? But I always step back and just laugh at myself because it's really, you can't take it seriously, the whole thing, you know? You can't. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just something that I believe we have to do certain things in order to keep us going and motivate us and pick little goals and go after them and stuff like that. I believe in Jim Beam. It's uh, one of the most remarkable products, not only in the United States, but all over the world. People sometimes use it <laughs> to get high in a bar, maybe after depression, so bad business deals or whatever. <laughs> but we, uh, we bodybuilders, obviously use it as a high protein and high amino acid supplement. Now let's see. How do you use that? Uh well, we usually put it in a very sophisticated kind of a, a, jigger, uh, a special jigger. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, it's very important that you take the right measurement here because. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have never drank in my life. Wait a minute. Oh my God. The skin is coming apart. This is amazing. Pump. 
Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, do you want to get a pump? Buy yeah. something from Jim. Fourth place goes to Boyer Cole. Third place goes to Frank Zane. Second place, Chris Dickerson. First prize, Mr. Olympia 1980, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He has that ability to make you love him and like him and want to vote for him. And Arnold has uh, that quality of convincing you that, that he gives you a good feeling. When you watch Arnold, you go, Wow, he's got it together. He feels good. He's in love with life. I want to be like that, too. When Arnold walks on the stage, he just puts his arms up over his head, flexes. People go crazy. They love him. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm extremely excited about uh, winning the seventh time the Mr. Olympia competition. And I have to be very honest that this was the highest level of competition I've ever faced in any competition in my life. And I was not aware of that. That is, it's going to be Leave for a while. 